Okay, so for an example for the final project, uh, like I said, I want to do an example. Uh, one of the options is going to be a if you're just pulling a blank on what you want to do, then handy hook idea because we're still in a pandemic of well stuff. Anyway, um, so the idea of the handy hook is it's a no touch to uh, touch free tool. So what I did here is let me share my other screen of just tools what I'm talking about. So switching over views, Handy Hook is just some sort of a hands-free tool. And as you saw, as you see here, I just typed in no touch hook, Handy Hook, hook tool, whatever. There is any number of iterations you could take cues from. Um, there's all kinds of different tool components. You can add your own, take it however you want. Hell, here's one that's actually of the same no touch hook, but it's for fishing. So go nuts. You could even turn this into something more along the lines of like some kind of camping survival tool kind of thing. Maybe you riff this and turn it into like a little Altoids tin of like a tiny fishing hook and spool or something, whatever. It's, again, it's a very general project totally on up to what you want to do, but I completely understand the idea of you can do anything. I have no idea what to do. So there you are. So here's the idea, just some general tools and such. So what I've done, and let me switch back over my views because I forgot how to switch back over to fusion. So let's start here. Well, first and foremost, as always, uh, or at least as should be your practice, save what you're doing. So I'm going to save, switch my project folder over to final projects. Oops, entitled, I want example. Example, hands free book. All right. So again, this can be very free form. I'm going to start by pulling in an example just so that way I have something to start with, even if it's just a general reference. So here I have a little, I pulled an image, probably not even gonna directly use this, but it is a decent example. Start there, starting from the top, having a look. All right, so that's more or less what I'm looking for. First things first, if I'm going to riff off, even if I'm going to just jump, use this as a jumping off point, as usual, you want to calibrate this. Remember, go to your canvas, right click, not edit canvas, but calibrate. You pick two points. How long is that? 40 millimeters. That's kind of small. Let's bump that up to 100. There we go. Now I at least have a 100 millimeter tool. Giggle, giggle aside. All right. So there's my starting point. As I said, some of the requirements are, or as the requirements are, it has to have a multitude of tools. Uh, I believe the example or the assignment says it has to have at least four tools. Uh, one of the elements or one of the, uh, or you have to have a multitude of um, operations, ex uh, operations shown. Sketch-based, extrusion-based, it has to have at least one form edit tool. I had said something like this could even be like the rubber tip that it had that might have for like a, a, a as a stylus tool that could work. Um, must have some a some sort of uh, connection points, so it could be maybe uh, using joints for multiple components. Connecting those doesn't have to be an active component or doesn't have to be an active joint. It could be a rigid joint, but if I wanted this to be more of a floppy joint, something you could bring in like a carabiner or like it has here a keychain just ways to add more elements to it rather than just the direct tool. Now I can, and I, and I intend to add more components to this. Um, remember that if you're bringing in hard, importing hardware from the McMaster car extension, that does not count toward your component count. Yes, use hardware for what you need, but that is kind of a cheat of trying to bump your uh, uh, component count. That don't count toward your component count. All right. So this is kind of a rough idea, and I'll just use this as a rough idea to go from. All right, so let's start with a sketch. First thing, I do actually want to edit my canvas, and that is simply to rotate it. 
so I can get that hook in a semi reasonable spot. My uh, increments are all keeps jumping between it's five degree increments and it's somewhere in between there. So what I'm going to do is say more like negative 42. That seemed eh, 43. I'm just trying to get it. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And I can just move it around to whatever. Cool. All right. I was just trying to orient that hook a little better. So where do we start? Let's start with a sketch. All right. So, like I said, you can riff off this. One of the things it does have to have some sort of like a key or some sort of like a holder point, a clear hold point. This same thing goes for like utilitarian uh, um, utilitarian uh, assignments as well. So, if you're doing something that's more exactly that utilitarian, it should have some sort of like a interactive component, shall we say? So, in this case, it's a little thumb hole. So, let's start there. Going to draw a circle. And let me grab a, I realized I forgot to grab a ruler. Pardon me a moment. Okay, so this thing is supposed to fit like around my finger, so let's actually measure that. All right, so that's actually 20 millimeters. What did I make that? Let's check the dimensions from the center to there. Come on. Oh my God. There we go. Made it 28. All right, so we don't want like, you know, a ring. So yeah, 30 seems reasonable. Let's just bump that to a nice round number. Okay. Pardon. From here, yeah, you can make, you can start this as maybe just a direct rectangle. We can edit this later. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna do some sort of hook. I think I'd like something a bit more, a bit larger. Sure, why not, why not? I'll use the offset tool to make a, well, offset. And let's make that uh, five is a little too weak. So let's say 10 millimeters large, maybe a bit too big. So let's say eight. Okay, I'm just riffing off of a general size. Round out that end with a two point circle. Bump, bump, there we go, I'll trim that a bit. Well, I'll we'll trim it now. Chop that part off, chop that part off, hooray. Actually, I might leave that last one. There we go, I think I might even wanna use that. This has a kind of rectangular back here. So we will just continue that down and around. That seems reasonable-ish. Let's make it square for reasons, 35 by 35. Sure, cool. That'll link up. Obviously that's not quite fitting, but yeah, something, something there. Let's trim out some lines. I wanna just chop all that. Yes, 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 I'm cutting away for a reason. Great, that's fit some fillets here nine sure that's reasonable remember if you don't uh click enter it'll just keep adding fillets the more you click so cool nine 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 and those are all the same great okay those are all fillets now let's do another fillet to connect the that make it a little more even super freaking duper problem is now when you do add a fillet to a line that crosses through like it does here it deletes the rest of the line. That's always that's always really obnoxious. So do the fillet just so it's a little bit better blended. And I just now need to connect the this side straight over. Cool. Now I'll add a fillet to there. Remember, fillets just make a for a bit cleaner transition, but in 3D printing or modeling and such, remember it's once you actually have this, if you were actually outputting this. Uh, a curved corner is going to be much stronger than a straight butt joint corner, simply because there's more material there. All right, so that's a real rough and basic thing. I do want to add in another hole somewhere over here because I'm going to put like a keychain or lanyard or something there. So hip -hop -hop. let's say five millimeters for that. Friggin' cool. Okay. That works, that works. Let's extrude that. So I'll press E for extrude. 
flump, let's say five millimeters. I don't know. Five might be a bit thin. So let's bump that up to 10. Was not intending on rhyming. All right. Now, the reason I added this down here, or I did not include that, that uh, sketch, the little end circle, I just wanted to make that a little bit larger. That's all. So extrude. If that was 10, let's make that. Okay. All right. I want what I actually want this to do, and I'll show you. I'm adding one millimeter higher just because I feel like adding this little bump for no good reason. But because I'm working directly from the plane extruding, well, I want this to bump out on the bottom too. And so far, we've only used one side or symmetric, which would pump it out 11 millimeters on either side. The other option is two sided, and this is exactly what it's for. So the first side is still 11 millimeters, but this lower side, if I just do one millimeter, now it's going the one millimeter below. Whoa, 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 lost it. Now it's going the Mom, one can you bring me up a, a plate? Oh, and shut up. Who oh, needs shit. a plate for lunch or dinner? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was funny. All right. <laughs> All right. So that's how you can use a two-sided, uh, that's how you can use a two-sided extrusion for or where you why you might want to use a two-sided extrusion for obviously that they'd be different distances on either side. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this operation joint or join. Bump. Now that will in fact combine after it combobulates. Great. Okay. The only reason I did that is because I felt like it. All right. So remember, one of the other components of this project is don't leave, unless you need sharp edges, don't leave sharp edges. So let's use a fillet tool and let's go ahead and do both sides. Let's see what, no, not 14. Oh my God, that's way too much. Uh, one millimeter fillet, that seems okay-ish. Well, let's make it a little bit larger. Let's see what two does. Yeah, that's good. Or what you could do instead of a direct fillet, use the full round fillet. So if this side, if I wanted it to be completely round, there we go, yep, between side one and side two. Let's see if this actually works because of that extrusion there, it's probably not gonna work, which is why I am getting an error message. No, oh. side one is the that, side two is the that. Error. Yes, yeah, because I made that little weird extrusion there. That's fine. So remember the full round just actually makes a complete round. So fine then. Be a jerk about it. I'm just going to use that. Still select the whole surface. Select the whole surface. And let's do a, I don't know. Let's see how far we can get with it. Three is much too much. Two is for some reason now not working. Yeah. I'll come back to it. Fine. We'll do the full round fillet on the inside and blam. Oh, that is not quite large enough to do a full round. So, all right. So that'd be one of the places where you definitely have to do a single. I can still select the inside. Let's do one millimeter. Just see where that gets me. Try two. That looks better. Cool. That works. All right. So this is an area where when you're adding fillets and such, you will run into issues. See, now my fillet goes right to the edge of the, uh, uh, right to the edge of the other thing. So I might need to go back and readjust my sketch. That's okay. We'll deal with that in a bit. Let's move damn zoom bar out of the way and I'll go back, change that to one. That way it leaves me with enough material to work with the other. Right click to repeat. No, there we go. Get that edge, let's get that edge and do a one millimeter fillet, neato burrito. It looks fancier. Cool. Okay, so I'll go, I'll go back and adjust this and I'll go back and adjust this as well, but okay. So that's basically where we are right there. I could easily now go ahead and actually, I probably should go ahead and add the fillets to those as well. Let's do another one. Great. Round out. Super friggin' duper. Now, I, as I said, you could very easily add in a um, edited form just to the front here, but I'm going to save my edit form for uh, another part that we haven't discussed yet.
uh, I'm going to make a, I'm going to use my uh, or form tool to create a um, holster, a sheath for this. So for right here, what I'm going to do, and because I'm just going to make a, a cylinder out of this, I'm just going to use a cylinder tool right on the surface here, because I'm just going to make a little nubbin there. So let's get right in the center, right there, right there, friggin' sweet. How big does this need to be? Let's say eight millimeters, grand. Let's extrude outward. And I don't know, 15? Cool, okay. Now I can do a fillet. Let's try the full round, see if this works on there. I doubt it will. Nope, it won't. So full round is for like square objects. All right. Ooh. Automatically, because it joined, it automatically added a fillet to both sides. So that's neat, but it's not actually what I wanted. <laughs> so let's cancel that. I just want it to the that. There we go. Now let's add that a little bit more. I'll try to use a slider here to get more of where I want it to be. There we go. I just kind of want like that little butt end, like a little rubber, like a little rubber tip. Great. Hit F6, so zoom out, there we go. So now I'm working with basically the starting points. Now there are other options. As you see on this actual example, there's this uh, wavy line. We, this, I could repeat uh, some sort of texture right there, like we did for creating the uh, teeth on the uh, pliers on the uh, utility tool set. So for the sake of time, I'm not gonna model that right now. I can always come back and do that in a bit. All right. But for right now, I'm just going to call that the basics of my handy hook. Will this um, be an acceptable finished project? No. This is just a very quick rendering uh, or a very quick uh, uh, version of this. So let's save here. And I'll just leave this as rough. If I can see where my cursor is. Cool. All right. So now I'm going to hide this, hide the canvas because I don't want that in my way anymore. It's just irritating me. Let's hide those original sketches. Super friggin' duper. Um, all right. So a couple other things you could do is something like this. To add other components. Well, let's do exactly that. Right now I've been working on the main component. I really should have kicked this out as its own component. So I'm going to start with that. Select that body. Go over to new component. Exactly that. Type, there we go, it's out of the bodies. Oh, that kicks that out and now it's a new component. So rename that. Okay, now it's its own component, super duper. Uh, next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna start a new component. For this, I want to make a lanyard. And I hope that's how that spells because I can't remember how you spell lanyard for all, the, all of a sudden. There we go. All right, so that goes out. Because what I want to do here is, as I showed you in the, or as it has in the canvas here, okay, what order do I need to do that? You could add other parts in for your other component, for your uh, component number requirement. So here you got like a chain and a keychain going. Uh, you could make a carabiner. One of the other things I wanted to show as an example of is how I could make like a, just that, like a lanyard, a rope. All right, so I would probably actually want to make this a some sort of like a keychain connection there. So to start, let's activate the lanyard tool. And yeah, I want to make instead of a circle, although I might need to start with a sketch just to give myself the reference. So let's start here. Sketch on this plane and let's do a circle. Only I need to make sure it's a two point circle because I'm going to be make sure that my circle is starting inside of this cylinder area. So, all right, so let me now I'll just go straight out and I don't know how big is a keychain. Let's have a look. That is roughly, oh, really? Oh, yeah, 32 millimeters. That's kind of large. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, yes, I could manipulate this, extrude this, blah, 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 but I wanted to show you one of the other tools here. So I'm going to finish that sketch. I'm just going to leave that as a reference sketch, really. Uh, actually, I should have moved that forward a little bit, but that at least gives me my spacing a little bit better. So far, we really haven't used the preset um, solids yet. 
One of the other ones is a torus, a donut. Easy way to make a keychain kind of a form. So I use that circle there as a reference point. You can create a torus the same way. There we go. I'm gonna start right in this, <clears throat> pardon me, right in the center. First, you select your outer diameter. Then you select the diameter of the actual um, torus. Basically what this is, is a pre-made uh, pipe tool. That's really it. So what I'm selecting here is the thickness. Oops, I didn't want that. I want to keep that. Uh, Taurus diameter. There we are. This one is how big around the actual Taurus is. So I don't know, like two. Mm. No. Hit the wrong button. Oh, come on. There we go. Just wanted it thinner. That's all. Operation New Body. Yes. Cool. That's it. I just wanted to make that little ring thing. All right. But I do want to actually put that in the right spot. So let me select move. I want to move the that. And I'm just going to snap this over so it fits inside the ring or inside that cylinder of the PJ. Cool. There we are. Okay. That's really wanted for that. Super. So now, and let me hide that sketch because that is just going to keep getting in the way. Now what I want to do is basically create a, well, actually, I should probably make another one. So let's start by creating another torus. I can always move this over. So this is right on that center line there. Cool. How big should that be? I don't know. Let's make that 10. Okay. And then the torus diameter, two. Uh, let's make, uh, yeah, actually, two is probably a good diameter. Great. Okay. Super duper. Again, move the that, yay. Yep. And I just want to move that over. So I'm basically moving it so it links with the uh, tool there. It's not actually exactly where it should be. I move this up so it's more along the center line. This is just general, just moving things into position. That's all. Okay. So now, now is where I want to create my uh, lanyard. Okay. I'm going to start a sketch. And I can just use the, the origin plane because that's where I'm going to do that. Start up top. Let's rotate that around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a fit point spline. I want to make sure that my line starts somewhere inside of this little link. And I'm just going to kind of doodle a line out. Doesn't have to be exact. I'm just kind of drawing a loop form. And this will make more sense here in a few. I want to make sure that it actually is a closed shape so it goes back to the original. Okay, great. So I got that. Now I can, of course, as always, keep playing with the um, oops, playing with these vertices. I can move these around. If you want to drag that out, you have your handlebars. You can keep tweaking those back and forth and reshape these, however. But I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to make, create a lanyard. Lanyard, unless it's sitting on a table, is only that one is not just going to be on a flat plane. So now let me rotate to the front or so I can see a little bit better, a little bit uh, moved up. Now what I want to do is I'm going to start moving these vertices. Also, I'm going to use the move tool so I have my actual uh, directional tools and drag these up and down. So instead of just keeping this directly on the single plane, now I'm going to start playing with moving them up and down in the uh, Z axis as well. And this can be just as lumpy as you like, because it doesn't really matter. I'm just playing around with this. But what I am intentionally doing is making sure that this line, and I probably should have added one more point here, so I might have to do that but that that line passes through that hook or that, uh, uh, that torus. Now this torus, I can also still rotate and that'd be fine. Okay, one last thing before I finish this part, I because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to create a single rail sweep. Unlike the pipe tool, which only creates, uh, remember circle, uh, square or triangular, I want to be able to create my own profile and sweep that all the way around. And all I'm doing really is just making this a ribbon. 
So to do that, I will create a sketch. Let's do it on the front plane here. And I want this sketch to be to interact with this line. So let's see here. Let's make a center rectangle. And I'll just use, actually, these are getting in my way. So let's hide those bodies. I'm going to use that point. Yes, 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 yes. Oops. Not there. No. Hide the body still. But I still want that re center rectangle. One thing you might run into is because I've created all of this stuff, or because I took this all off of that single plane, it's going to kind of, it kind of gets a little, it confuses the program a little bit. So you might just have to use the other origin plane there. There we go. That's what I want. I want the uh, XZ plane. Now I can make something right there. And let's see, let's see here. I think just like one millimeter wide and let's say four tall. Great. And I do want this to be a bit more rounded. So let's use the fillet tool. Uh, let's bring that up to 0.5. No, I guess 0.25 was fine. Cool. All right. Just making this a bit more rounded. That is all. Select, 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 select. Great. Okay. That's what I wanted. Let me orbit around. All right. So this is not intersecting right now. That might cause, and that'll probably cause a problem because you remember if you're, well, I'm going to get to it. Let's finish the sketch for now. Because what I'm going to end up doing is go to create and I want a sweep. So single path, my profile is this, that little sketch I just did. My path is the big lanyard, but they have to actually be on, they actually have to be connecting to one another. So right now that's as it's saying, yeah, I've got warnings and all that such because it is not gonna be showing some stuff. We're gonna be doing some weird things. Also, I think the computer froze. Oh my God. So if it will still create it along that path, it'll just be offset. So if you want it actually on that path, you need to make sure that it's intersecting. So that's exactly what I'll do. So let me cancel out of this. If it stops thinking about it. Okay. And I'm just gonna move that sketch over so it actually intersects. Let's see, where is it really giving me problems? From the left, okay. So let's move, not bodies, but faces, or actually sketch objects. Man, the orbit is going. I don't know what is disconnecting or what keeps reconnecting, sorry. Let's hide that handy hook. Where is my profile? There you are. All right, I want to move you. I might run into problems here because that is a center point sketch. So let's see what happens. What I wanna do first is move that over. Oh, it actually is moving, great, okay. Man, the orbit is really going nanners on me here. All right, so that is there. But remember, one of the other things is you do want to orient if you want the maximum, or, or if you want to keep um, uh, your actual, like actual, uh, the correct profile, you want to rotate your profile so it is as perpendicular as you can get it to the starting point of your sketch. So I'm just gonna rotate that to, yeah, that looks good. Okay, all right, now as intersecting that, like an orbit around a, well, an orbit. Okay, so let's go to create. I wanna go back down to, I keep losing where I'm going, sweep. My profile is that sketch. My path is there. Zoom out. Yes, I know the bodies are currently hidden. So let's let that go and boom. Now using that, profile, I can create this um, kind of ribbon lanyard. And remember, you can play around with the orientation, all that stuff, perpendicular, operation, cut. No, I don't want it to cut. I want it to create a new body. I don't know why it kept saying cut. Oh, because it was intersecting the um, torus there. I'll have to move that around. That's okay. All right, new body there, great. Remember the other thing you can do is actually have it twist. So if you want, you can have it twist like 180 degrees. It's gonna recalculate. Or it's gonna completely freeze. <laughs> I think it broke it. 
might not even really see it. Single. Nope, 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 nope. Wrong one, wrong one. I don't want to adjust that. Sorry, hang on. Your distances here are your it's a whole values of zero to one. So remember, I want it one, so it actually completes the entire circuit of that. Uh, my profile actually completes that entire circuit of that uh, path. Oh, I'm really loading up the uh, computer here. Okay, great. So there we go. That's what I want. And why it was giving me that er error is my uh, my other keychain piece here. I'm just letting it catch it, the computer catch up here. There we go. Great. Okay. Uh, because that was intersecting. So what that means is let's move. Use the move tool, not sketch objects. I want to move bodies. I want to move to that. And all I'm doing is going to just by hand rotate that so it's more fitting. That's all. See how they're now. It's floating. Yes, that's okay. But you get the idea. That's exactly the point. Okay. Great. Now there is a lanyard. So let's save again. Forgot how to spell again. All right. So now unhide the hook tool. Friggin' super. Hide the canvas. Okay. So now I have a lanyard attached to my hook tool. Still needs a little uh, tweaking, but you get where I'm going with this. All right, so I can bring up the appearance tool also. Remember, one of the things is definitely needs to be an appear, or you definitely do need to attach appearances. I can add fabric to the, um, ooh, or leather. I don't know why I said, ooh. <laughs> All right, fine. I don't know, something boring. Light, fab, light gray fabric, sure, fine, whatever. As a fabric y tool to it, uh, let's add some metal to these. Let's make those rings stainless steel. Polished, shiny. All right. And then, uh, not that you have to use this, but as I was saying, uh, that um, copper is inherently antimicrobial. So, yeah, let, I feel like making the hook tool copper. Now, one thing is, I do actually want this tip to not be copper. So, now I would switch to faces. And I do want to add, do, 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 where is rubber? I know there's like rubber on here somewhere. I think it's under other. <laughs> Ooh, carbon fiber. Ah, there it is, rubber. <laughs> or, or water. <laughs> Let's make it water. <laughs> All right, so by faces, I can attach. Why is it not letting me select faces? Oh, because it's not downloaded. All right, well then download it, jeez. Jerk. And there's that little teeny one there. Oop. Okay, now it's got a rubber tip, hooray. Now, realistically, uh, one thing I would want you to do is actually model like inside some kind of like post or something, how is that actually connected? Just make sure you actually do something like simple, simple like that. And that could literally just be like an internal post. Okay. I'll save that again. Appearance is applied. All right, so, so far, any questions? And I'll pause the video here. Okay, so everybody's on the same page here. Again, this is a quick, rough model. This needs a lot of adjustment and like the sizes and such, especially with this little hook school, not great. Um, all right, but one thing I did say before is you do still have to have an, some instance of an edited form. This has it's a, my I, this has the appearances and everything applied and all that such fun. Great, but a easy way or an engaging way to create uh, or make use of the edit form tool. Let me just collapse these pieces. Is I can make a sheath with it or a holster for this. The idea is okay. That's on a lanyard. It would be hold. It would be hanging like around your neck or something. That makes sense. Great. But maybe it's like a rubbery tip or I don't know, for some reason you've made like a, a toothpick on it, which obviously if this is like a hands-free thing, good Lord, you would not make a toothpick on this. It's the thing for touching all kinds of other stuff and then let me stick it in my mouth. Terrible idea, duh. But you might wanna keep it covered anyway. So an easy way, or at least a way to incorporate a edited form 
is to create some sort of a sheath. Now you could technically make this just using direct surface tools, but I'm gonna use this. Uh, I'm gonna create a form basically the same way that we created like the uh, spoons and such, the utensils by um, starting some forms, editing some faces out and then adding thickness. But we're gonna go a little bit further from there. All right. So I can create this with a plane or the other tool we haven't really used yet is faces, just creating individual freeform spaces, or sorry, faces. Now, what this will be is, yes, it's exactly that. It's basically creating stuff with a plane, which is just a plane, just direct flat out. Um, but faces, you can also kind of more free form. So it's not quite as direct. I could do this really either way, so it doesn't matter, but I wanna show you all first with the faces. So I'm gonna to go to the top and actually I messed up. So let me cancel finish form because what I should have done, let me delete this because what I should have done is started a new form or started a new component. Okay, new component, sheath. All right, now, now we can do so. I wanna keep this all separate. Start form and faces. Now what you can do, what this will do, and you'll bring, see the toolbox here, you can start with a simple, you can create more of edges or chain. I would just stick with just simple for now. Number of sides, it can either be four sides or more multiple sides. Again, you can tweak and manipulate, play around with this. The other thing you could do is object snap. Now this isn't really gonna work right now, but this is actually a way where, and I'll show you an example a separate time, how you can actually draw flat but then the faces will wrap around something so it's a great way of adding other components or such to something like the toy animal form where you already have a three-dimensional uh, sculpted form maybe you want to add something that uh, that hugs the shape it's also a great way of creating um like uh, wearable pieces and such like if you have a model, even if it's a rough face or arm, whatever you're building on top of, uh, or it's a fully 3D scanned, uh, scanned uh, duplicate of yourself. Cool. Um, it's a great way of building directly off of that. But let's keep it simple for right now. So I'm just going to use the multiple sides here. Okay. Don't need object snap. And there we go. Still working on a, off of a plane here. And I'm just going to be using the direct start point. Oh, I don't want you to do that. All right. So what's going to happen first is I'm going to just start literally drawing some faces here. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is instead of like starting with a plane is because this I can just kind of free form. If I want this to kind of be exactly that a little more warped. There we go. Now, obviously, what I'm doing here ain't going to work. I'm going to have to tweak this, but that's OK. And what I mean by that is going to be apparent in a moment. Oops, there we go. I already borked it up. Repeat face. Because it has to have four sides, I'm building out exactly that four sides. Why is it not snapping? Ugh. I don't know why. Now it's giving me grief here. What is happening? Why are you refusing to work with me? Uh, what's going on, buddy? But I don't know why it's fine. Multiple faces then. Basically what it's doing is you're snapping two vertices, but it's not letting me snap additional ones. That is super weird. Okay, fine. We'll just delete that one and see if I can start back over. What happens is you see how it's automatically starts to round over. That's what I was trying to create. We'll start again with that working there, there. It's just more for some reason, it's not letting me just snap outwards. Yeah. There we go, weird. Oh, I when I restarted, it wasn't still on the same work plane. Duh, okay. And just building some, forms out here to be honest for what i'm doing here actually starting with a, a plane probably would have actually made more sense okay but just for now i'll show you this rough way of working basically what i was doing is just trying to build a form that would encapsulate this piece 
Now, as soon as I hit OK, this all rounded out. Great. Now I can start to form edit and such. So from here, I just want to manipulate vertices just because that it's still a flat surface. Let me, flat, let me move down. You can see I'm basically working with a flat surface. The only difference on instead of using if I'd started with a plane, uh, I would have had to manipulate individually. But let's see here. I'll do a separate one as a plane, and you can see how it, that actually would probably be a lot more easy to work with. All right. But let's move some stuff around. I'm just trying to shape some stuff. That is all. So actually, maybe we'll include all the things and we'll use not there. I want the edge and I'm just going to use a scale tool, shrink that. Let's move the nope, 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 nope. Move the face around. See, I'm just simply manipulating some stuff around again. So just like all the other stuff, still using form edit, all that fun. Great. OK. Probably if I'm going to need this accessible, I probably am going to, I can't quite grab the edge. So let me grab the edge here. I'm going to move this back just so I'm exposing part of that ring there. That's all. Hit OK. Cool. All right. Great. Now, I don't need to add symmetry or anything because this is not symmetrical at this point. But what I do want to do is extrude. Now, this is where you can actually extrude faces and such here, as opposed to when I was free forming, like with the uh, when we were doing like free form with the uh, edit form and just extruding with the space with the faces by holding um, uh, Alt or was it Command on a uh, Option. It was Option on Mac. Sorry, but I can use extrude here. And I'm going to select all the faces. Let me just hide the handy hook and all that such so don't get confused again. And I'm just going to select all the things. Great. And you can see here what's going to happen. I'm going to unhide the hook. And as I extrude upward, it suddenly rounded out a lot more. But this is now a simple surface. So what I'm basically doing is just creating a pocket here. By extruding upward, and it's still in the edit form. So, like we were when we were playing with uh, um, editing form for the for the uh, uh, toy animal and such, it's going to keep rounding things over because it's more organic shaping, more sculpting. So that's exactly what I want. Great. So edit that up. Eh, let's say ten. That works. Nope. For some reason, because it's trying to extrude the other way, so it's got to go like negative. Blah blah blah. Okay. Great. So there we go. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm making half of a pocket, half of a sheath. And the problem is, is yes, it is encapsulating everything. How could I get the thing inside there? I'm going to delete some faces in a minute, but this is going to work for now. OK, so I've extruded just those faces up. Click OK. Awesome. Now I can go in and start deleting a couple of faces. I'm going to delete that. Instantly opens that all up. Now, the problem with this, of course, is obviously I can't have a cut in right here because then the hook would get stuck. So I'm going to have to delete a couple more faces. There we go. That makes it a bit more rounded. Cool. All right. Now, one thing um, I probably should have done, and I probably should have done this right from the get go, was um, I should have uh, uh, either moved my handy hook or something, everything. So it was evenly divided above and below the XY plane, or I should have done a symmetrical extrude instead of just directly up. I should have extruded up and down at the same time, just so it keeps everything centered, it's just easier to work that way. But all right, so we have that. I have this odd shape. I can, of course, continue to edit this if I want to go back and manipulate anything. Let's move that point. I just want to kind of round that out a little bit. That's fine. Or I could try deleting that. I don't know. I can't delete that from right there. There you go. Now that rounded that out even more, but that's probably going to cause some problems. So I'm just going to control Z, put that back. Great. Okay. So this is a very rough pocket or this is a very rough sheath, but you get the idea. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the thicken tool. So just like when we made the utensils, now that I have basically an edited surface, I need to add some dimension to that. So just click there. Select the whole thing. Let's add one, two millimeters. Okay. Now, one thing is this is trying to extrude or thicken inward. I want it to go outward. So let's add 
to do negative for whatever reason. So now it's expanding this outward. And one thing I want you to take note of the thick and type, I would not leave it as, I, I'm not leaving it as soft or no wedge. I'm leaving it as sharp. I want it to maintain a sharp angle there because what I'm going to do, click OK. It's still soft on all the other edges, but it is sharp here. But more importantly, it's maintaining a flat, sharp edge here at the bottom. Now, technically, I could probably have left that as no edge because what I'm going to do next is you can do this either here or I can mirror this outward. But what I'm going to do is symmetry is not just internal. Remember, you can use the mirror duplicate function within the finish within the form tool. So I could duplicate this whole body, select my mirror plane, which is actually the working plane here, and boop, it throws the other side up. And this, I can leave the checkbox to weld, and that will fuse the two sides together. Click OK. Now it is symmetrical now, so that is so now if I, I can still tweak this, you see here, um, if I select one plane, it's highlighting the other. Now it has added symmetry. So that is an easy way to create a sheath here. I'm gonna hit okay. Now is now it's gonna probably calculate and such. There we go. Just double checking. All right, no, it did not fuse. I apologize. Um, they are not. It's not one body, so I would do want to make sure to go to use the combine tool, operation join, target body, the top, tool body, bottom, join. I can leave it as same component because it's all in there. There we are. Now it's one object. Great. And this is what I was talking about. Like, yeah, it's kind of floating weirdly in there, and this like probably should move around a little bit. So you do want to make sure this is all actually um, lined up. So let's move this, move the body. Always got to move the bodies. <laughs> All right, come on, come on. There we go. Move to that one. There we are. And I'm just going to move that up so it more of lines up right in the center. That's all. Okay. Reactivate all the, th <clears throat> pardon me, all the things. Show the lanyard. Okay. Let's go ahead and save. Edit form sheath. Okay, now there's still a lot I can do with this, not just appearance wise. Uh, I'll pick something with that later. I don't know. Let's say paint and let's make it metal flake because why not? Why not? Red. Nope. Oh, this is probably, yeah, of course the red one is one I'd have to download. So download it. Shiny. Why not? Okay. And this is where I would probably still want to go in and like, because uh, I don't think I can round this out with a fillet. Let's try. Add both of those. Let's see what happens. Probably going to freak out on me. Yeah, it's not going to let me do it. Yes, 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 yes. Probably too large. Let's try 0.5. Oh, it worked. Great. So there we go. Just rounded that out a little bit. Okay. All right. So the other thing now I want to do is remember things need to be connected with joints. Don't have them just floating around. So first thing is I would want to connect the different chains and such, or the chain links and all that such. What I could also just do is with all of this just floating, I could create this as a group. Or rather, I could just lock these together as a group. So let me hide the sheath. Just so we're seeing this part here. And I forget where it is. So let me bring up the shortcuts and group. Rigid group. That's all I want to do because I'm just trying to select these parts, hold them together now. And you'll see the key comes up down here, this little puzzle piece here. So, reason I did that is add there, open back or unhide the sheath. Because what I want to do now is I want to be able to animate moving this whole thing in and out. So basically selecting all of here. And as I move, now well, that didn't connect them. Okay. 
So that should have all locked together. Something I, my rigid group did not stay together. Edit rigid group components. Yep, yep, yep. Food child components. Make sure of that. Why is this not moving? There we go. So now they're all locked together. I had to check the, the checkbox include child components because the sketches are tied to the bodies. All right. So you see here now I can move both the component and the lanyard as one unit. They're not uh, linked together with joints. They're just grouped together. And don't forget, if you go and grab that and move it around, remember, it's going to ask if you want to capture the new position or revert. I want to revert. Pop that back. Okay. Now, the reason I'm doing that now, I want to actually create a joint between this rigid group of the lanyard and keychain and all these little parts and the sheath. Okay. So now, joint. Uh, let's see. I actually want a, let's see here, my first component is the, this part and then the other um is the uh piece so actually no i want to select my keychain as the thing that moves and to where is linked to the sheath all right so this gets really tricky because of the because the sheath is an edited form you can have some difficulties trying to grab a face or something so let's tweak this so first off, I'm going to, because that was the whole point of me trying to get everything kind of smack in the middle between the X, uh, the uh, uh, plane, I'm going to select first the component. And where I want the first snap to be is smack in the middle of this fate or uh, of this cylinder. This gets really tricky. So I mean, instead of selecting, instead of mousing over the top or bottom, I'm going to mouse over the inside of that cylinder press and hold control and I'm gonna try and grab right there you see these there you got three points you got these the circle triangle and circle circle top and circle bottom those are the top and bottom of the cylinder the triangle remember is your infusion universal symbol for middle so I'm going to select that triangle that now has selected my joint point the point of my joint bleh, is floating in between there great all right, now this part gets tricky because, especially because I rounded out this edited form, there's no real edges to grab onto. And if I try to snap to one of these or something, it's going to try and snap all of that up there. That, that ain't going to work. So what you can do, and let me deselect that so it goes back away. What you can do is the other option, one of the other options here is between two faces. If these faces inside of your edited form are flat enough, between two faces is made so that you can create something that like, maybe it's something that moves between two pivot posts or something, and there's not actually anything in between. But if you have two posts with holes in it or something, you can assign a joint um, point somewhere but or smack in the middle between those. So I'm gonna try and select two planes, and I say try. So let me hide the hook tool so I can get in there more easily. And you can see plane one, there's nothing there. It's not letting me grab anything. So that is a big problem. All right. So what I'm probably going to have to do is select a simple joint. And what I'm going to have to do is, mm, let's see how I can do this. Hey, troubleshooting is always fun, eh? All right, let me select right in the middle. I need just, I need something I can grab onto because remember you can always move the joint after the fact. You can always edit that joint. So I'm just gonna use like that point right there. That's not great. Unhide the hook because now see it's snapped over there. I don't want that at all. But what I can do, go to a top view, now I can just manually move the actual location of that joint because I'm just using that as a reference point. So all I did is I just slid it down on the Y axis so that it brought it back to about where that was. And it's not actually exactly. So let's move that roughly there ish. And I'm using the, uh, the rest of the lanyard as my reference point, trying to get that torus back or that toroid back in the middle of that cylinder. All right, that'll work.
Motion though, I don't want a rigid joint because now it's just freaking out right there. I don't want revolute. I don't want it to revolve around there. What I want is slider, not that way. I want it along the X axis. So what it's gonna show is now it's just gonna move it like it's being taken in and out of the sheath. We'll edit the points in a moment. Okay. Whew. Save again. Joint edited. All right, let's edit the joint here. Not my rigid group, that stays locked. I want my slider, let's animate that. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to mess with that again too because see it's not uh, the rigid group is not staying put. But all right, let's set my minimum and maximum. Minimum at zero, maximum, however, I want, and I could just drag the flag over. Let's move that out. Uh, apparently somewhere in there. So let's say 130. Okay. All right. Test that animation. Super good. Okay. Don't forget the thing that you do not want to move at all is the sheath. So let's right click on the component sheath and the second from the top ground, lock that in place. All right. See the little pin to icon comes up that is now locked. All right. So now I should be able to grab and just click and hold the slider or sorry, the uh, my hook tool. And because it's all a rigid joint or a rigid group, it's allowing me it to move the whole thing. Neat. I put it back where it was, so the uh, option to revert back doesn't come up. So let's save there. Probably should have put in a, a uh, note. All right, so this would be something that now, okay, the uh, lanyard would go around your neck or something. It has a nice little sheath. It definitely could be much more form-fitting. That's not a very good sheath, but I can always edit that after the fact. Um, what other thing would be like, I could add like a um, pocket hook to this, you know, like if your pocket knife or something like that slips onto your pocket, it's got a little hook on there. You could add something like that onto there. That'd be an easy thing to do uh, in that. Let's see here. I was thinking about this earlier. How might I do that? Well, I could start a sketch because always start a sketch. <laughs> Um, I want to have some part that's going to be flat. Let's make that 10 millimeters. Okay. And I'm still going to use there. Now let's use a fit points form. All right. Connect from there. And I'm just starting this off a little bit just so I have the option to. All right. Basically, I'm just going to make like a little hook thingy and then a little kick up. Why is that doing that? Let's edit that a little bit because I just want there. There we go. Great. Okay. And I'm going to use an offset tool to give this whole thing some dimension. Well, let's go outward. Uh, let's say negative two. Okay. Close this up. Line and line. Other side, we'll do a two point circle. Close that up. Trim, there we go, friggin' super. Now this is gonna get a little weird in making this. Ugh, forgot to close my uh, email, sorry. Because I'm gonna have to create this from multiple directions. So this kind of goes back to um, just how you can play with different tools in different ways. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a belt clip for this. So I'm starting with just a sketch here. Finish a sketch. Let's extrude this sketch. And how wide are a lot of belt clips? Let's see here. That one on mine is about eight millimeters wide. So eight. No, I definitely don't want cut. I want a new body. Okay, cool. Click OK. And obviously what you could do something here is if you wanted on uh, these sides here, there's kind of you could add a little sketch or something like that. 
if I wanted to continue to extrude just down here, oh, it didn't make a split. So, geez. I was trying to have like little wings or something like that, but that's all right. Maybe we'll just pretend that it has a connection. All right. But if I wanted to give this more of a profile, what I could do, realistically, this would probably be better done as an edited form as well. But maybe if I wanted to give this more of some curvature or something by cutting in, or actually, tell you what, let's edit that, give myself a bit more. Let's say, let's do the 15. All right, now I got a much wider belt or a much wider belt clip. But what I want to do, I'm going to create a sketch and let me hide. Oh, poop, I'm not on the sheath. I should have had this on the sheath. That's all right. I can drop, I can drag and click it or dra uh, drag and drop it. All right, because what I'm going to do here is I want to basically just starting outwards somewhere here. Great right there and let's mirror that oh damn i forgot to put a line oh always fun I'm not sure right where the center of this thing is because it's a body so i'm going to start just right there and right there i'm just using some construction lines to give myself some references there we go triangle comes up Zoom back out. Want that as right up and down. Doesn't matter the length. I'm just trying to create a straight line. There we go. Now I can mirror with that against there. Whoop. There we go. Okay. Finish sketch. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those lines. Go to modify, split body. Body I want to split with that one. My splitting tools are those two lines obviously i gotta hide all the other things i don't want to interact with which is the hook tool there we go and that looks good enough this checkbox on the extend splitting tool that's in case you want to affect a whole bunch of other things if you want to uh uncheck that it just shrinks the extend tool so it just affects just the approximate range of the object you've already selected Click OK. Now that has chopped up. Let's see here. What is what now? <laughs> I lost track of stuff. Chop that one off. Nope. Ah, that's body two. Keep track of stuff. Label it a lot better. So I just use a splitting tool just to add that profile there. So that's a it's a it's a neat way that you could work chop, trimming some parts off. Uh, like I said, something like this would probably actually be done a little bit more effectively as a edited form, but there you go. Neat and easy way to do that. Um, let's unhide the body on the sheath, but my mistake actually that should have been, let's say, notebook. that should be actually on here. So I can just literally drag and drop it onto the other component into the body folder. Boop. Now the belt hooks there. Label that sheath. Ooh. Now you could, of course, uh, move that in position. <sighs> uh, let's see. Last part would be what I should have done here. Um, I want to make a sketch. Oops. Make sure to activate the sheath component because I forgot to do that before. Activate there, right there. What I'm doing is I just want to draw a couple of holes. Inside there, let me hide the sheath so I'm um, see what I'm doing and switch to visual style to hidden edges so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Uh, let's make some circles right about there. Let's make a three millimeter circle, sure. And then use the move tool because I'll make a copy and drop another one there. There we go. Okay. Now, there's sketch, unhide sheath. That's extrude. And I want just those two little circles that's really difficult to get at now. And now I can, because I'm going to use this to cut direction. Yep, that extent type to object. 
pre-select cut. And let's see if I can do that. Yep, there we go. Chops holes in both sides. Now, oh my God, last part is now I could bring in some parts from McMaster car and put like some hardware in there. Let's see if it just completely gums up everything. Screw bolts, sure, round hot socket, hex drive, sure, blah, 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 blah. Three millimeter screws, that sounds good. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Uh, I think five mil four millimeter screw is fine because I'm just grabbing something that seems reasonable. We'll use the that and product detail. Nope, I want the uh, step, fold, or step file download. Boop. Drops a couple in there. There we go. And now I would want to drop those in place. Sounds good. I'll see you next week. Have a good night. Hope you feel better. Let me know if you have any questions or anything. All right, well, let's drop these into position. Component one. What's going to move? Remember, I can select the underside or mouse over the underside of that screw, press and hold control so I can get inside and grab right in the center. And then where it's going to go to, right up there. Press and hold control, snap to there, and boop. And let's make sure to swap that over to a rigid joint. Now that is locked in place. Great. And I should have brought in a second one, but there we go. And bring in some hardware to bolt that in and all that such. So component, copy paste, make another one. And let's also, let's see here, hide that one. Do the, that one. Sounds good. Also put that one in with a joint. Oh, which is the one that doesn't, oh, good Lord, I can't see the, which one is jointed. Okay, hang on a second. Now I've lost track of which one is which. <laughs> That's problematic. Now let's activate it. That way I can see what I'm doing. Okay, well, are they, ah, they're both in the same spot. Curses. Okay, so let's move that one out of the way just so I can try not to confuse the hell out of myself. Yeah, capture new position. Okay, there we go. All right, now I'll do the joint. Same deal. Mouse over, hold control, or snap there. Snap to the hole. Boop, 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 boop. Drop that in place. Super. So there you go. Can't spell. Belt. Hook. Where? Ooh. There we go. Obviously, this still needs some nuts underneath. Um, that way, it'll lock it in position. And let's start collapsing stuff so I can see what the deuce I am doing. All right, sheath later, belt hook. Activate all the things. Excuse me. Appearances. All right. So this still has some more work to be done but a very rough and quick example of what components you can add or what elements you can add in to meet the component requirements, um, how you can bring in an edited form like this. Obviously there's fillets here. Uh, I use, made use of a rail sweep for the lanyard, a couple of other bodies for the toroids here or the uh, toruses. Still want, I still would want to add a fillet to this circle here because that would just be a pinch point for this ring. Um, appearance is applied to everything. This sheath is really much too large, but you get the idea. I can obviously shrink that down. I can go back in um, for that edited form and just adjust the extrusion height a little bit. That would that would uh, let it recalculate. I uh, used a I used a uh, split body tool to shape that uh, belt hook a little bit more effectively. And it's a shiny, shiny, bright red kit metal flake case. So there you go. Finish. Uh, finished. So that's pretty much a lot of the elements but can go in. Uh, as I said before, though, let me hide the sheath so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, 
The tools still need to be really refined on this little handy hook here. Uh, you know, like the example, like the actual uh, um, canvas had, they have like a little uh, actual textured spot for the back end. Right now, this really only has two tool functions. The requirement is four. Those could be simple things. This could be like, all right, well, this has a, you know, this is a hook. There's a little uh, stopper. Maybe you add in, I don't know, like a bottle opener or yeah, heck, you could even add in. It doesn't even have, a, have to be a direct tool. Uh, it could be like a separate part of the keychain on the lanyard. Technically, the lanyard is also another as other is another tool because it's a part of the thing. Uh, so just go over the assignment and look over. But that is roughly the stuff that would need to go into it. So very best of luck with yours. And there we go. <laughs> I'm out. And we'll uh, see what we can do later with it. Good luck. <laughs>